and Integrated Systems Businesses for GE. So just as a reminder, Business and General Aviation Engines for GE are all the engines that we produce that are not commercial transport, which is regional or airline, or military. Although some of our engines do have military applications, the primary focus is business and general aviation. <coughs> Integrated systems are all of the products we make that are not engines at GE that are on airframes. So I first want to uh, just do a little housekeeping here. We have a huge announcement that we're going to make. I want to get some of the news on our other programs out of the way early. So a little housekeeping. Um, I don't have a slide on GE Honda. GE Honda has their own press conference. That's at 2 o'clock in room 117. Um, I'm not going to, I don't have a slide or a discussion on the uh, GE CF34 3B engine that's on the Challenger or the new MTO engine that's on the Challenger 650. I can answer some questions at the end if you're interested. Um, we also have, uh, as you guys know, we started the Business General Aviation Division in 2008, so this is really the culmination of a seven year uh, run up to uh, announcing this new engine. And it wouldn't have been possible without the help and the resources and the technical um, aptitude and credibility that we have over in the Czech Republic. And the ambassador from the Czech Republic is here, uh, Peter Gandalovic. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. So the first piece here is kind of an update. Important updates, but I've got the big announcement toward the end. Uh, so the first one, and we are really thrilled about that, and I see Murray is here in the front, uh, front row. You know, uh, in 2010, GE, when we were getting started in business general aviation, really focusing on this, our scores with ProPilot uh, customer support survey, I think we were number five, uh, rated number five, and we have made a huge effort <coughs> to improve our support because we knew this was coming down the road. We want to be ready, and this year we were selected by the ProPilot readers to be number one in product support. And uh, that's a huge achievement uh, for us and our team, and we're very proud of that. We've gone from 10 to 59 authorized service centers around the world um, in the last five years, and we're really focused on customer alignment and putting a lot more resources into that. So that's, uh, that's kind of a, a big news for us. Also part of that support is our on-point. On-point is the customized service agreements, <coughs> the power by the hour uh, type programs. We have that on the CF-34, on the Challenger, CFM-56, on the uh, Airbus and Boeing uh, uh, corporate aircraft, and obviously on the Passport, which is the engine for the Bombardier Global 7000. Um, big big uh, improvement, 200% increase in our coverage since 2010. So customers are really valuing the support that we provide uh, through those programs. The financial advantages that are listed here, securing the investment, you have OEM parts and a higher residual value. Right now the residual value for an engine on on point on a midlife challenger is $2 million more than if you're not on our program. Uh, a lot of peace of mind. So uh, a lot of improvement there. We also have some integrated systems products on the G500-600. We have the primary and secondary power management system. We have health and trend monitoring. And we have a system called data concentration. Put those three systems together and the airframer is able to take on an airplane this size about 300 pounds of weight out of the airplane. Very sophisticated. It's, uh, this is the first business jet with an integrated data network. Uh, the health monitoring is, monitor is uh, looking at 9,000 plus parameters. We land, we have the systems that, that uh, send that either up to satellites or mobile or uh, however you want to get it off there. So that's, uh, that's a big program. We're very pleased to be on that. Now we have the Passport. So the Passport is the big engine uh, for the, for the uh, global and this year We've completed a lot, of, a lot of tests. We have one test to finish, and that's the block test. That'll be done uh, 
uh, next year, but we've already done the flight test bed. All those flights are done. Fan blade out, those are done. When I say done, they've successfully passed. Uh, water, hail, uh, ice ingestion, only the black endurance, the 150 hour triple red line test. It's the only thing left to go. So uh, we're, uh, we're moving forward on that. And we're really putting a focus on entry into service. With all of the engines that we are introducing today, the number of <coughs> entries into service that we will have in year 2020 is more than double what we have today. So that's one reason why we took a step back and said we need to really up our game on product support. On the H series, we're still making a lot of progress there. There are more variants of that coming out all the time. There'll be, uh, you'll hear about some more in the next couple months. But the H75, now the H series is the engine that we derived originally from the uh, Walter M601. We acquired that business in 2008 in the Czech Republic and introduced GE technology into the engine. Uh, we came out initially with, a, with the H80, which is 800 shaft horsepower. We have the 775, which is 750. There's another variant called the H85, and uh, there's some additionals after that. The electronic engine control that we debuted here uh, about a year ago will be certified at the, right now we're targeted at the end of first quarter next year. So that's a system where it's a single lever power control where the propeller and uh, engine control is all uh, uh, done with one lever and as electronic. We've also, uh, we're also in diesel fuel trials to certify the engine with diesel fuel instead of Jet A uh, with the ASA and ANAC down in uh, Brazil. And we've, uh, we've delivered a little over 250 of the H series to date. In fact, the LET 410 is on a round the world trip. And I believe it's out at the static display. And that has, uh, this particular variant has the H80 engine. There's a new L410 called the L410NG that has the H85 engine. But this one out here has the H80. They've done six countries, 14 stops. You can read the chart. Um, they're actually gonna stop hopefully in Cincinnati on the way back to the Czech Republic. So some of the engineers and people over there can get their hands on it. So if you go out to the static, if you'd please take a look at that. So that's all I have on the other engine programs. So I'd like to talk about now is this advanced turboprop. There's already been some release in the press on this. Um, I can tell you this has been you know, seven years coming. We acquired Walter in 2008 so that we could learn and gain some domain expertise in this marketplace. Most of GE's customers are large fleet operators on the regional and uh, commercial uh, airlines. And as you guys know, the, uh, the operators in this marketplace are single or very small fleets. And their requirements are different. So we acquired Walter in 2008 and, have, and initially worked on the H series engines, but at the same time in the background, we knew that we wanted to grow beyond that. So I'm first gonna show a video, and I have to show you my computer skills. So, hang on. The other one, yeah, you got This one, okay. <coughs> Thank you. 
So like I said, this, uh, we started this journey back in 2008, which is seven years ago. We actually started working on this engine five years ago. Uh, we invested that time to learn to market, talk to customers, and go through four different design iterations through uh, cycle decks, the full performance development uh, type of cycle deck modeling that we do on our commercial and military engines, which is a big, which is a big deal. We were able to do that because uh, we do what, what we call a GE, we pull from the GE store. You know, GE is a very broad company. We have technology and uh, even some product support expertise throughout, throughout the, uh, the organization. And so I'm in the enviable position leading this division that I don't have to actually pay money to invest in new technology because the technology in the commercial and military segments is way advanced over what has historically been done in business and general aviation engines like the PT-6. You know, the PT-6 has had a phenomenal run. If you step back and think about it, that engine was, was introduced in 1964 and it changed aviation. It changed aviation. And we started working on how can we introduce an engine that could compete with that platform. <coughs> first few iterations, first few design exercises we did, we took to customers. They were a little bit better, a little bit better, but they really didn't differentiate the engine from the PT-6. But more importantly, they didn't, dif didn't allow the airframer to differentiate there, but they could offer from what they do today. So we really took that to heart and we said, we gotta come up with a clean sheet. And so we started taking pieces from the GE store, like you saw in the video, from this engine program, this technology here, to see, could we put all that together for this marketplace? So we've taken proven technologies and the result is really game changing and it's game changing not just looking at the engine, it's game changing from what this engine will allow airframers to do to advance their products. And I am super thrilled to uh, announce that Textron, after a competition, Textron selected GE's advanced turboprop to power a new airplane that they're developing, which is a single engine turboprop. So let's talk a little bit about the performance here. Turboprops in this size class are typically in about the nine to one pressure ratio, overall pressure ratio. That means that you take the air in the front, or the back, I guess, in the, in the case of this engine, goes through as a compressor, and it compresses that to nine to one. This engine is 16 to one. That additional pressure ratio allows more efficiency, higher altitude performance, less power loss when you climb to altitude. It gives us the highest power to weight ratio in its class by far. 20% less fuel consumption over the mission. We also have an integrated engine and, pro and propeller control. You know, I mentioned that the H80 and 85, so really the 85 is the first one. I guess the 75 is with, on, the, on the next one. The H-75 is the first aircraft to have uh, an integrated propeller and engine control. So today, if you go out and you fly a turboprop, either you leave the, the uh, propeller speed the same, you don't touch it, or you have to move some levers. And on a twin-engine airplane, that, including the condition lever, that's six levers to run, two en to run two engines. Our mission here is to make this engine the operation of this engine and the cockpit control look just like a jet. Eases in transition, reduces uh, pilot workload, and so 
the engine, con the integrated <coughs> propulsion control, the IPC on this engine, controlled propeller speed, pitch, torque, in conjunction with the engine to optimize the engine and the propeller at any point in the flight envelope. This engine has a little over 2,000 initial version, two, a little over 2,000 thermodynamic horsepower that we then derate to 850 to 1650. That's the initial design. We've also, because we can control and limit so that there are no over speeds, over temperatures, over torque, we can extend the time between overhauls by 33%. So this is huge. The technology that got us here is really the high OPER, or the overall pressure ratio, is from the compressor. Now just to give you a feel for it, the overall pressure ratio on the GE9X, that's the new engine we're developing for the 777X, the new Boeing 777X, is 27 to 1. This is 16 to 1. Turboprops today are in the 9 to 1. So we're making a big step up, but frankly, this marketplace will not pay for a compressor that gives you 20 plus. 20 to 1. It just won't. Um, we do that through variable stator veins. So variable stator veins are these veins that guide the air into the compressor. GE invented those for our supersonic military aircraft decades, a couple decades ago. And then we've migrated those into our commercial engines. Now we're bringing them down into this turbo, into this turbo uh, prop engine. We also have cool turbine blades on the big engines. We run those engines hot. That's how you get your efficiency. Get more power in a, in a given package. We have multi-stages of cool blades. We actually take what we call a secondary flow. We take some of the flow out of the compressor and we flow it through the blades and it cools the blades so we can run higher temperatures, more efficiency. We've got 1.4 billion hours in service on cool blades on other applications. The electronic propeller uh, and engine control. You know, Dowdy Propeller is part of uh, the integrated systems business that I lead. And we provide those propellers and electronic propeller controls on aircraft like the Bombardier-8, for example. We also have props on the C-130, C-27s, and others. So we're able to take from the GE store some of our learnings, our capability, on Dowdy Propeller, you marry it here. And then on the small engine architecture, we have 130 million flight hours on engines like the T700 and the Black Hawk and that style of engine. So when you look at, you look at all this, while we're bringing phenomenal technology into this market space, all this that we're doing has proven over hundreds of millions of hours. We're also, design, we're also doing this engine in Europe, and earlier this year there was an announcement that GE is uh, going to invest $400 million in a turboprop center of excellence in Europe. And that's where this engine is being uh, designed. The certification test, the test, certification testing, manufacturing, etc., are over in Europe. GE Aviation already has 12,000 employees in Europe. If you look at the number of engineers within aviation, it's about 8,000, GE Aviation, about 8,000. 3,000 of those are outside the US today. And the way GE has done engine developments for the last decade, these centers of excellence, whether it's a turbine blade or a, or a compressor stator vane or whatever, those designs are done around the world today and then integrated back in the United States. This is the first engine, new engine, that will be integrated, all those systems integrated outside the United States. We have 10 European countries where we have a presence today, um, and we actually have 22 facilities. So this is a big move for GE. We're not stopping with this engine. It's a turboprop center of excellence, not an ATP center of excellence. So future turboprop engines for business general aviation, 
regional, et cetera. We're planning on doing those outside in, uh, in Europe. So with that, I would like to open those bottles back there, I think. <laughs> OK? Can we do that? And um, you know, the, the press, everybody has been very, has actually been very kind to, to uh, GE and to me over the last seven years. I can remember when I came to the first press briefing in 2008, there weren't this many people interested in what we were doing. Um, but the, the, the real question was, yeah, but are you really going to be in this business? Are you really going to be in this business? Because the only engine we, we had that we were flying was on the CF-34, and it's a great engine, great airplane, the Challenger, but we've got to be honest, most of those CF-34 engines are on regional jets. So it was kind of an opportunistic application of the CF-34. But we have the GE Honda, the Passport, the ATP, the H-Series, and there's some other things that we're looking at. And we want to be a major player in this marketplace. In 2008, our total revenue was um, less than $100 million in business general aviation engines. And with these programs that we've talked about here, um, we're well over a billion dollars by 2020. So the ramp of deliveries, the ramp of new products is accelerating. That's why we want to get ahead of it by improving all the customer product support stuff and get that, uh, get that nailed on our existing products. So I'd like to uh, have everybody grab a glass of champagne. Hopefully we can start. It's coming. Uh, oh, it's coming? Yeah, but you can. Go. Okay. Um, what time is it? 20 minutes, that's pretty fast. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Christy Tannehill, who is the uh, Senior Vice President of Turbo Props and uh, Interior Design for Textron. And like I said, I want to thank everybody for being kind and listening to us for the last couple years. This is a huge announcement, and I wanted to toast, I say we're the only ones, but I'll toast you, <laughs> <laughs> toast uh, Textron for selecting us, and also toast GE for uh, giving me the greatest job uh, to be able to, to uh, be up here speaking this, and uh, to both of our success. Okay.